Hey folks, this is Sean Bagshaw from Outdoor Exposure Photography and PhotoCascadia.com. In this video, I'm going to show you some new features in the TK Actions V4 panel that came out after I recorded the video guide to TK Actions and the second edition of Complete Guide to Luminosity Masks. Tony Kuiper is constantly innovating and improving his luminosity mask tools. Even though the V4 panel came out in June, he's already added some fun and helpful new features. If you currently have the V4 panel, then you have these features, but you may not know it yet. This video is intended to bring you up to speed. If you'd like to download a free copy of this tutorial to keep on your computer, there's a link in the text below the video. The latest update to the TK Actions V4 panel adds two main new features, Infinity Mass and the Zone Picker. These provide new ways of generating custom luminosity masks. Let's start by looking at Infinity Masks. Infinity Masks use a Levels Adjustment layer which is controlled in real time by the user to create an infinite variety of either lights or darks luminosity masks. Here's how it works. If you want a lights luminosity mask, then click the Infinity button next to the plus minus lights button. This creates a simulated luminosity mask that can be adjusted in real time. The starting mask that you see is a Lights 1 luminosity mask. The usual white reveals and black conceals rules of masking apply, so the lighter areas of the mask will receive more adjustment and the darker areas of the mask will receive less of an adjustment. In the Levels dialog, the mid-tone slider adjusts how restrictive the mask is. So sliding it to the right, can create a more restrictive lights mask. From the lights one starting point, you'll progress through lights two all the way to lights five, but in infinite increments. The black slider can be used to control how far the lights mask can feather into the darker tones. And the white slider controls the boundary of where the mask is entirely white. I make my main adjustments with the mid-tone slider, but I use the black and white sliders to increase tone separation and contrast in the luminosity mask. If you push too far, you greatly increase the contrast and decrease the feathered nature of the luminosity mask, and this can lead to some bad looking transitions and obvious banding. So, Getting the mask you need using the Infinity Mask can take some practice. Clicking OK in the Levels dialog creates the mask in the Channels panel as a new selection and it loads the corresponding selection. The same applies with the Dark Series Infinity Masks. Clicking the Dark's Infinity button opens the Luminosity Mask Simulation and the Levels dialog. And moving the mid-tone slider affects the restrictiveness of the mask and how far it feathers into adjacent tones. And the black slider opens up the darkest tones in the mask. And the white slider restricts the lightest tones in the mask. And clicking OK saves that mask as a new selection in the channels panel and loads the selection as the active selection. The zone picker helps take the guesswork out of finding the right off-center mid-tone mask to target specific tones in the image. When you click the zone picker button, it opens Photoshop's color picker tool. Then you can use the eyedropper, which is activated when the color picker opens, to select a tone in the image that you want to adjust. Once you've chosen a tone, clicking OK runs an action that automatically chooses among 23 different tonal zones to find the one that most closely matches the tone or color that you selected. The available selections are similar to the zone and half zone buttons on the spectrum tab of the V4 panel, but they're a bit narrower and more focused. To pick a different zone, you can just click the button again and select a different tonal range in the image and click OK. 
and that new zone will be selected. The color picker tool itself can be used to select a tone instead of selecting a tone from the image. So if you want to choose a darker zone or a lighter zone, you can do that right here in the tool. In fact, the zone picker action allows two new masks to be created. You can click on pure white and this will create a lights six selection or mask and picking pure black produces a darks six selection and mask. Once luminosity selections or masks have been generated using the infinity mask buttons or the zone picker button, they can be applied like all other luminosity masks to the various techniques I teach in the complete guide to luminosity masks. You can use the mask to control various types of adjustment layers and you can further customize them using the filling a mask or painting a mask techniques and you can localize adjustments using the masking a mask technique. You can burn or dodge with them using luminosity painting technique and also use the overlay painting technique to create masks for exposure blending. I'll show you a quick demonstration of how I might make some adjustments using these tools. I'm going to start with a darks infinity mask instead of using one of the standard darks masks from up here. And I want to target some of these darker areas up in the hills behind, uh, behind the trees. So let's see, I can maybe open up the feathering a little bit and then restrict that mask down so that it is mostly targeting those areas. And yeah, maybe somewhere into there. So I'll say OK. And now with that selection active, I will create a levels adjustment layer and then use that adjustment to darken those shadowed areas that I want to give a little bit more darkness and contrast to. Next, I want to take down the highlights in some of these cattails that are reflecting the bright sun. So I'll use a lights infinity mask and I'll use that to really target those brightest areas. So I'm just going to be affecting those bright areas on the tips of the cattails. And click OK. And again, load a levels adjustment layer. And this time I'll set the blending mode to multiply. And you can see the effect that that's having on those brightest highlights, toning them down nicely. And I can further work with the levels adjustments to dial in just the amount of adjustment that I want to those. Somewhere in there. And if I want to localize that adjustment so it doesn't bleed over into other areas of the image, of course I could use the masking a mask technique by adding that to a group and then adding a layer mask and inverting the mask. And then with a white brush, just painting it in right in the places where I want it so that it doesn't affect areas that I don't want it. And finally, let's use the zone picker tool. And I'm going to pick this tonal zone in these trees back up in here and click OK. And let's add that to a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And I want to use that to add some contrast into those tones. Again, in the background. And then finally, I'm going to do another zone picker adjustment. And this time I'm going to target these real deep shadows down in here, which are going to be almost black. And I'm going to use that zone selection with another brightness contrast adjustment set to the screen blending mode to open up those shadows a little bit, but also control the contrast in the shadows. And then maybe adjust just the right amount of opacity to get as much of that adjustment as I want. So with some quick adjustments there, you can see I'm able to make some, some very nice tonal balancing adjustments to this image. I didn't do anything different than I would do with any of the other luminosity masks. 
the infinity mass and zone picker just give me new and different ways to go about selecting the mass that I want to use. In addition to the infinity mass and zone picker tools, there have also been some more minor updates to the panel. The burn and dodge layers are no longer filled with 50% gray. They are now transparent, which allows the painted pixels on the layer to be loaded as a selection and used for additional adjustments. I demonstrate this process in the video on my YouTube channel titled Transparent Layer Dodge and Burn Technique, so make sure to check that out. Another improvement is called layer bookmarking. When actions in the panel require adding layers at the top of the layers panel, the action automatically returns the user to the layer they were on before the temporary layers were added when the action is finished. This is most important with the plus minus view button. For example, if I was on a layer in the middle of the stack and then created a lights selection and viewed that selection, layers are added to the top of the stack. Now when I click the view button again and those layers are removed, I'm returned to the layer I was on instead of the top layer. Another improvement is that the plus minus view button now works in the LAB mode as well as the standard RGB mode. In LAB, the color of the red overlay will be a little more intense, but it still works the same. One more improvement to the plus minus view button is that now when you turn on the selection preview, an extra layer has been added in the view selection group. Its visibility is off by default, but if you click it on, you'll get a blue overlay. In some cases, the blue overlay is easier to see, especially for people who have a hard time seeing the red overlay. So that should bring you up to speed on the latest improvements in the TK Actions V4 panel. Thanks for watching and good luck putting these tools to use. Make sure to leave a comment or contact me if you have any questions.